The AFE Club Cannon Wagon 251-9 Offs D. This is the 12th kit that I've built since getting into the hobby in 2018. And here I'll put up some images of the sprues and the instructions that you can take a look at. This is the first kit I've built where I've used rubber band tracks and the decals, I ended up having some trouble with the decals. The instructions were clear and I didn't have any problems with the instructions. The construction starts with the lower part of the chassis, the lower part of the rear fighting compartment, and the front suspension and steering. Everything went well in this part of the construction. and uh, I used a clamp to make sure my gaps were tight for the lower part of the rear fighting compartment. I enjoyed building the driver's cab area. Uh, the molding in the dash was crisp and it made uh, painting the gauges pretty easy. This version of the 251 requires these side ports to be filled. So I took a sharp chisel blade and shaved off the raised part of the molding and then used some Tamiya putty and filled in the rest of it. I painted the interior with late war dunkel gelb and then painted the individual parts because after the half track is assembled it would be difficult to get in there and paint the details. I didn't have any brass paint to paint the shell casings but it didn't matter because in the end I ended up taking them out. The gun built into a good looking model uh, the metal barrel is a nice touch and I believe it even has rifling. And from what I understand, these guns are the ones that came out of the early Panzer IVs. I painted the gun and the gun shield flat black before I assembled them. Because I was worried that if I didn't, once it was put together and I was painting, I wouldn't be able to get into the small little recesses and then there would be bare plastic showing. Here's where I started having some trouble. I set the upper shell in place and then attached the rear of the fighting compartment. And after doing so, I had some pretty large gaps up front. I discussed this issue in a Facebook modeling forum and a couple guys that had built the kit didn't have any issues with it. So I'll leave it up to you whether it's a problem or not. I also had trouble with these armored visors. The hinge geometry is not quite right. I wanted to position the driver's visor open, but I couldn't do it and still get the hinge to fit in the socket where it belonged. So I had to model it closed. And here you can see where I'm filling the gaps with Tamiya putty. And I had a lot of gaps to fill. And it's unfortunate when sanding out the putty, I sanded away some of the distinguishing features of these half tracks, especially in the rear fighting compartment, where the upper part of the compartment overhangs the storage boxes a little bit. 
And in order to get the putty sanded out, I ended up taking that detail away. And here I'm adding components onto the front of the half track. And all of that went well. Uh, once it came time to add the gun, and I started running into trouble again. The gun shield sides had a very pronounced bow. And that made it difficult to attach them to the top of the fighting compartment. And here I have problems with gaps again. And I think the issue with the gun shield gaps is the plate that goes across the driver's cab. It sat up a little bit proud and I didn't catch it. At this point in the build, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated. I ended up having to use a clamp to take the bow out of the gun shield sides. And I kept that clamped in place until the glue sat up overnight. I puttied the gun shield gaps closed with Tamiya putty and once I have those sanded out I, you know it just doesn't look right. After sanding out the gun shield putty I just carry on with the build and move on to the next step. I had some value gear stowage and I decided to use those resin parts to kind of camouflage the gun shield seams. And I also added some additional stowage to the interior. I wanted to make some rope for attaching my stowage, so I used some common sewing thread and I twisted three threads together to make a rope and then I saturated it with scenic glue. After attaching the rope to my exterior stowage, I painted the new interior stowage and glued those pieces in place. I'm now ready to paint the exterior color and what I did is I took some toilet paper tore it up into small sheets and stuffed it into the inside of the fighting compartment to use as a mask. The first color I put down is a base coat of late war Dunkel Gelb. After painting the body of the half track I then painted uh, all the wheels and tires. The late war camouflage colors are very different than the 1943 colors. Even though these colors are not what I'm used to, I have a couple reference books that say it's correct. So I'll go ahead and roll with it. Here are the camouflage colors I used. I use MIG tire and rubber paint to paint the tires and the rubber on the road wheels. In this photo I've started painting some of the details on the stowage. I have the wooden poles painted, the ropes painted, and the straps painted. I've also highlighted the creases and the seams a little bit. This shows where I've started to do some chipping and I did a light amount of chipping across the body and I also did some chipping on the gun. I've gotten where I'm getting comfortable doing chipping with a brush 
And uh, once you start to get the hang of that, I certainly like the results better than chipping with a sponge. Although chipping with a sponge does have its place. Well, the decals are on and I'm ready for clear coat. I had a heck of a time with the decals. They kept wanting to bust up on me. And uh, <laughs> it's like I think every one of the decals on the model is, is three or four pieces. I use a filter in a few places. I did a couple road wheels. You, know, you can see the right engine hatch has been done in a few other places. Not a lot, a little bit. I use dark brown and dust MIG oil brushers to create my grime streaks. The effect is a little bit subtle, but, but you can see it. I made this rear tarp from a piece of computer printer paper. I cut the paper to the shape I thought a tarp would be and then I saturated the paper with VMS paper shaper and then once it was wet I could fold and shape it to any shape I liked and then I draped it over the edge of the fighting compartment and it really took shape well and when it dried it was hard and it was easy to paint it's really a nice product and uh, I think most VMS products are pretty good products. I use MIG oil brushers to dirty up the lower chassis. And then once I had that done, I went ahead and applied mud splashes. Applying mud splashes is an art. I have to mask off the entire model when I'm going to do mud splashes because I have no idea where that stuff's going. I glued the road wheels permanently in place. I set the road wheels on a piece of track to get them in alignment and then used a square on each side to make sure everything was lined up square and straight. I painted the tracks a very dark brown and then a medium rust color and then a lighter rust wash. And once the tracks were painted I glued them together, glued the ends together with styrene cement. Little did I know there is a left side and a right side track. I didn't notice that one is longer than the other. <laughs> I tried to fit the right side track on the left and it was obviously too long. I soon got it figured out though and got the tracks on the right side. I had a hard time with these tracks. They didn't want to stay glued together. And I glued them to the road wheels and they would hold in place for a a couple days but after a while they would pull loose so uh, that wasn't exactly satisfactory either. I cut a piece of pink insulation foam for the base and then I cut out little recesses for the front tires and the tracks to sit down into so it doesn't look like they're floating. I painted the base with acrylic paint and then I covered the edges of the base with spackling so I've decided not to use styrene sides this time. I applied 12 millimeter static grass to the base and for 12 millimeter static grass I always apply it by hand. I just roll it between my fingers, get it to stand straight and then just stick it in glue. After I had all the grass applied, I test fit the model in the base, and it looks about what I was expecting it to look like. I 
Some static grass looks pretty natural, but I like to paint it. And I mix up a batch of bright green paint. And I use green, yellow, and a little bit of white until I get the color I want. And then I spray the static grass with this green paint. For this scene, I wanted my grass to be like November grass, where the grass is starting to lose a little bit of its luster and it's turning brown. I took to me a buff and I mixed it very thin. And then I tried to dust the top of the grass with it. So I had a, a very low angle against the grass. And you can see I'm almost, almost perpendicular to the grass. So I'm just trying to touch the top of the grass. I was pretty happy with the end result. To paint the sides of the display base, I just use house paint and a foam brush. And a quart of house paint, that'll do a whole lot of display bases. Well, I think that wraps it up. I'll let the black paint dry and we'll put it together for the last time. Well, there it is. You know, considering all the difficulties I had, I'm not overly disappointed in the result. I mean, it could have been better. Um, I'm going to let you decide about the kit. And thanks for watching.